it looks like a picture-perfect world. Trains delivering their payload on time, wharfs bustling with activity, and ships coming safely into harbor. It takes a frog to point out that this is a miniature world. A world that exists under the watchful eye of its benevolent creator. Well, everybody wants to be God. <laughs> this, this gives you the, this sort of the power of God. You can create your own, your own world. I've uh, always lived in my own little world. Mostly alone, uh, not into team sports or anything, so. No, Al wasn't into team sports. He loved reading and building models, being outdoors on his own. And then one magical summer vacation fell into his lap like a gift. When I was 10 or 11, I spent a summer up in the old Inglewood camp on the north side of, of Beaver Cove. It was the same year that they, they took delivery of their first two diesel locomotives. Everything else was steam. And I got to ride on the speeder in the, in the, in the, the, the uh, cab of the steam Lokis. And uh, it was like a dream vacation for a kid. A dream vacation that Al never forgot. A memory that just wouldn't go away. So it was almost inevitable that when his model building became more serious, there it was, Englewood, and a passion that began with boat building. I started repairing boats <laughs> for people, and so it all sort of happened at the same time. But it was the boats before the trains. This is all framed exactly like the real boat. What Al began building were these. Model boats so finely detailed, you'd be excused for thinking they were the real thing. Many of which, not surprisingly, worked at the Englewood waterfront. If I can, I get the drawings from the marine architect that designed the boat to begin with. If those aren't available, then I'll take photographs and measurements. Because I, when I work on the real boats, I often, when they're up in the dry, I'd, I'd take measurements from them so I could build a fairly close uh, a representation of it when I built a model. But the boats don't just look authentic. Al builds them with techniques and materials as close to the original as possible. Like if it's a wooden boat, then I'll build a wooden hull plank on frame. One of them, which I have in the garages, it has the same number of ribs, they're cut the same they're, as they're the real boat. Al's boat models are extraordinary, but they're only part of this backyard world, a world that didn't fully take shape until he moved from Richmond to the Alberni Valley, where he finally had enough room to set his imagination free. I knew I was going to build my own pond. Ponds are kind of boring, so I figured I should put a railroad around it, and I'd planned this before we moved here. So I'd built some of the buildings, and I'd built some of the the uh, box cars and the cabooses and, and uh, log cars uh, for the railroad. So when we moved here, all I had to do was build the railroad. All he had to do? Hmm, those locomotives are from Englewood. And the trestles they haul over? You could find them in the logging camps of Al's memory. And although not every building or structure in this world is from that long ago summer, they're all historically accurate. There was a shot of a barn on a hill, and the barn was rotting away and sort of falling down. And I went, I have to have one of those. So I built the rotted barn, but they were based on these photographs in Sharpie. The dock uh, with all the, the white and red buildings on it, that's the old Inglewood dock that was in Beaver Cove on the north side. Some people read a journal, I just built a railroad. <laughs> well, what it really is, is a memory made solid. A single perfect summer recreated, and a solitary boy who grew up to become a master craftsman whose hands could create magic. <laughs>